What we're going to be going over here is a linear programming example. We're going to set up the purchasing budget plan here for the year here. And we'll really look at the first six months of the year here and say it's for year 20x1 here. Okay, so this is the numbers that we're going to be dealing with. So we'll start out with these numbers based on our gross sales dollars. And what we have here is for 20, uh, what's projected here is for 20x1, our sales and the stock requirements that we have by month. And just say it could be in thousands of dollars or millions of dollars. We'll just work with the basic numbers here to understand what's going on. Okay, so what we have here for our month, if we have our 12 month period here, we're gonna have, uh, and I'm showing it one, two, three, four, five, six. And we'll look at the first six months here, but I have the top row here represents our months here. And then we're gonna be looking at our rows here. We'll start with our estimated sales dollars, just say it's in thousands or millions of dollars here. So for the first month, we're looking at 7.2 here, thousands or millions of dollars, whatever. And then for the second month, we have 8.4, third month, 12.0, and so on here. So then the other thing, what we're gonna have here, our purchase cost of goods sold, and this is really what went into our product for the year here. So we're estimating that our purchase cost of goods sold would be 60% 60 of our estimated sales here. So just looking at, say look for month, first month here, month of January, we have a purchase cost of goods sold at 4.32 here. So let's go and let's look at how we got that. So we just take the estimated sales here in the first month, 7.2, times 60% because that's what we estimate. And that's gonna give us a 4.32 here in thousands of dollars, just say. And then we would do that the same for each of our next months here. Just take your estimated sales for the month here, 8.4 times 60%, you're gonna get about 5.04 and so on here. And then we have another requirement here. We got some finished stock and we're gonna to have to, our finished stock that we're gonna be maintaining here by a month here is gonna be based on 30% of the sales of the next three months uh, that we have to maintain in stock. And that's gonna be based on the end of the month here. Okay, so looking at our calculation here, this is our finished stock that we're maintaining. Well, for first, second, we're looking at the third month here. And this 8.28, that's gonna be our beginning uh, stock, the beginning, beginning of the month here, that's gonna be the amount of stock here in dollars that we're gonna be dealing with. So for the first month here, we'll just say where we have our purchase goods, 60% uh, of sales, 4.32. Our beginning of the month stock, finished stock that we're gonna to have to start was 8.28. And we would have derived that from the um, the three months that we were look first three months that we're looking at here, but that's going to be at the beginning of the month here. We're work we weave that into our problem, and then for the next month here, or the month that we're going to be looking at, really for our first month here, uh, our month of January, the end of. Uh, the stock requirement we're going to have the end of the month stock requirement is going to be 9.36. So how do we get that? So and we would take this. Uh, second month here, the next three months here, 8.4, right here, plus 12.0, plus 10.8. Sum those together and take 30% of that, and you're gonna come up with 9.36 here, say in thousands of dollars. So that's gonna be our end of the month stock that we're gonna be looking at for our first month here that we're gonna have to maintain as finished stock. Okay, so you know what we're dealing with here when we have our different numbers here. Okay, so what we're gonna have to do here is this. We have to determine our monthly purchases in just gross dollar amounts for each of those six months. And I'm, our monthly purchases are gonna be represented by our variables x1 here, plus x2, plus x3, and so forth. So we got these six months here represented by, this is what we're gonna have to calculate, our monthly purchases here in thousands or millions of dollars. Okay, so that's gonna be our gross purchases here in dollars uh, for each month. That's what we're trying to calculate. So what we have to do in our objective function here in our linear programming, we're gonna be minimizing our purchase cost here based on our monthly purchases here, X1 through X6. So this is what we're gonna, uh, this is gonna be our objective function, X1 plus X2 and so forth through XX. And that's gonna be our monthly purchases in gross dollars. So all we're looking at here is gross dollars uh, based on our 
estimated sales and what we're looking at as our, what's going into our product is 60% of our estimated sales is going into our product and then we want to maintain that uh, stock requirement finished stock at the end of the month here 30% of the next three months estimated sales okay so that's our so we've got our objective function here so now let's go and let's set up our constraints here Okay, so what we're looking at here for that stock, finished stock requirement here at the end of the month in this case, it would be S1, S2 through S6 for those six months here. Okay, so this is what we have to set up here. First for our purchase cost of goods sold constraint or our per averaging, average purchase dollars that we have to maintain here. And again, what I've, I've got to laid out here, this is gonna be our constraints we set up in our linear programming. Okay, so what we have here, we're gonna have the purchases for the month shown in this first column, X1 through X6 here, and then each of the rows here is gonna represent our, month, our monthly purchases that we're gonna to have to make here for each at month one through month six here. Okay, so what we're gonna do here, we are going to, this is what you have to solve for, these purchases, X1 through X6 here. And then what we have to do, we set it, this is gonna be an equality that we're gonna set it to. So we know that our averages purchases for the month that we we're gonna have here, uh, those are the cost of goods sold that was that 60% we have for the first month, 4.32, second month, 5.04, and so forth down to 4.80 here. So that's gonna be our equality here in our constraints. And let's just go up and look at that again here just to see it. Okay. so. You see where those known numbers are coming from, that 60% of sales that going into our cost of goods sold here, 4.32, 5.04, and so forth there. Okay, so that's what we set up in our constraints here. So what we have to do for this, looking at our first month here, we're taking our purchases here of X1, which we're trying to sell for. We add to it the beginning of the month inventory or finished goods that we have here of 8.28, should have looked at it. So, so nonetheless, you're gonna have some beginning of the month or some starting finished goods in this example here. So 8.28 here. And then you have to subtract from it the end of the month here finished stock. For S1 here st stands for the first month, the end of the month finished stock. So you got your beginning of the month here, which you have 8.28. And then the end of the month here, you subtract from it, gives you S1. And that has to equal 4.3. 4.32, but this is where we calculate our purchases here. So the purchases make up the difference between our beginning of the month, our end of the month stock requirement, and our it has to equal our average purchases that we have uh, going into our cost of goods sold. So we do that for each month here. So for these, look at second month here. What what again? We're got to determine the purchases for the month. That would be X2, but our end of the month, what's sitting in finished stock here at the end of the month as S1 for month one becomes the beginning of the month here for month two. So S1 here, so S1 becomes the beginning of the month here, X2 plus what we have here, what we're gonna purchase here plus what we have here in the current beginning of the month here, S1 stock, finished stock that was coming in here uh, from the previous month. And then we have to subtract out the finished stock that we're gonna to have to maintain here in the second month here. Okay, so you see what's going on here. So that's gonna to have to equal 5.04, our average purchases that we have here for the month. Okay, and then same thing. So this third month here, third month S2, the end of the stock sitting in our finished goods at the end of the month becomes the beginning of the month here of, of finished stock that we have. And, the, and then we'd add to it whatever purchases we're gonna have for the month here. And then we subtract from that the end of the month stock that we have to maintain here, end of the month finished stock. And that has to equal our average purchases for the month here, 7.20. So you proceed on in that fashion all the way down here. Whatever your beginning, whatever the end of the month in the previous period becomes your beginning of the month a stock that you have here for the period, then you're gonna to have to add in whatever purchases you make, have to subtract out the end of the month stock that you wanna maintain for the period, and that has to equal your average purchases for the period. So that's how that works. And here we're gonna to have to, here you're gonna assume that's non-negative, all these variables you have to assume that non-negative, the purchase you have for the month, 
your stock that you have in the beginning in the end of the month. Okay, so that constraint has to go in as well. Okay, so then we have the other constraints here, that minimum finished goods stock that we're talking about. Remember that end of the month stock, that was that 30% in the next three months uh, stock that we have to maintain here, at, in this case at the end of the month here. Okay, so for that first month here, our stock that we finished stock that we have has to be greater than or equal to 9.36 here. And maybe we could go back and look at that here. And in the second of month, 9.72. So maybe let's just go up and look at that again. Okay. So here's our finished stock, 30% of sales for the next three months here. So this first month here, we the next three months, it turned out to be 9.36. We calculated for the first month here. Second month, it would be 9.72. It, has to, it relates to the 5.04 here, and then the 8.52 here for the third month. And then the other thing is, that's we're only looking at six months here, but because we have that three months advance here, that 30% uh, of sales based on the next three months, we have to calculate our, our months four, five, and six as months seven, eight, and nine here as our for our stock requirements here. So. That's, this is our 12 month period, but we have to extend this. Uh, we have to know what our uh, sales are here and stock requirements are for uh, not only the six, we have, it's based on those extra three months here. Okay, so that's it. Let's go back down here. Okay, so for our min fini minimum finished stock requirements, it has to be greater than or equal to, for each of those months here, yes, first stock, finished stock at the end of the first month here has to be 9.36. There's our month, uh, first month. Second month here has to be greater than or equal to 9.72, and third month 8.52, and so and so on down here. Now this is the thing here with this linear programming, and we're going to find out that at least with my linear program here, if I put in the inequality greater than or equal to, what it's going to do, it's going to take all that stock that I, all my purchases that I want to have to make here for that six month period, it's just going to lump them all together here in either the first or the second month. We're going to make all the purchases here in the first or second month. So what I have to do here in a bit is I have to, instead of the finished stock here at the end of, uh, for the end of the month, greater than or equal to, I have to set it as an equality here. S1 here has to equal 9.36 here for the first month. S2 has to equal 9.72. So you can't put in the greater than or equal to, we have to set in the equality in this case. So really with this linear programming, all it becomes is just really a fancy calculator. So you can actually debate the uh, usefulness of the linear program, but nonetheless, what it's gonna do here, and we'll go look at the results here, it does give you an idea what you're gonna have to have for purchases for the month. You could do the hand calculation as well here if we look at it. Okay, so let's go and let's look at our minimum uh, LP, our solution, our minimum cost here. And in this case, I come up with 33.72, could be $33,720 or 33,720,000 and so forth here. But nonetheless, you're gonna, linear program is gonna have your, based on a minimization here, you're gonna come up with 33.72. And then the other thing is here, because I set these as inequalities, the stock here for S1, you know, the program didn't come up and say I have 10 point, I need 10.0 or something like this. I had to set it as an inequality here in order to derive my purchases for the month, the X1 through XX. So you can see here, based on that, again, all I did is I assigned them 9.36 equals first month here 9.72 the second month s3 8.52 so that's what the linear program is giving me here all right so that's a limitation that we have here in linear programming in this case and then if we look at the end of the month or what we need here purchases so that's our end of the month finished goods inventory setting here it really equals whatever we set up as constraints here okay whatever so that's a limitation here on our linear programming. But then if we go and look at our purchases by the month down here for X1, 5.40 here, X2, 5.40, X3, 6.0, again in thousands or millions of dollars and so forth, X4, 
X5 5, 6.18 here and X6 5.40 here. So if we gone back to our uh, equation here, our, our constraints here, because we know what S1 is, we know what S2 is because it says set them as an equality for each month. Well, we can eat, and we know what our average purchases are for the month that we want here. We can easily calculate it, X1, X2, X3 here. So that the linear program is giving us no more than what we would calculate here by hand here. We're solving all these uh, multiple e linear equations here, but really it's just giving us the difference here. We started out with some beginning of the month uh, inventory, finished goods inventory. So in this case, we have some beginning of the month finished goods. And then we plugged in here what we want as finished stocks here for each of those uh, end of the periods here. We know what those are based on our calculation, that 30% of the next three months. And then we knew what our average uh, purchase cost was, and that was 60% of the sales for the estimated sales for the month here. Okay, so you can see the limitations here with linear programming. It becomes maybe nothing more than just a fancier uh, calculator here. Instead of doing it by hand, you've done it here. Okay, so that's that. And then maybe let's just go up here and let's get some graphics on it. Okay, so again, I'm just showing a 3D graph here, and these are supposed to be our constraints here. Looking at our stock here at the end of the first month here versus our purchases here in the month and that just looking graphing against their minimum cost here for the month here so we're not we're coming up against some constraints here but it's sort of averaging right in the middle here and then moving down here same thing looking at our end of the month purchase our purchases for the month here of x2 the second month versus our our stock here at end of the month for x1 here you can see our constraints are a little bit different here we've got some constraints starting here and here and i don't know exactly what these are here but they would uh, relate to our equation and then finally going down here if we look at just s stock at the end of the second month here versus stock at the end of the first month you're not coming up against any constraints it's just giving you some point here what stock and relating it to the a minimum cost here for the period here. Okay, so we went through a basic example here and we didn't, we only looked at gross dollars that we were talking about and you can see some of the limitations that we're gonna have by doing that. Okay, so that'll end our discussion.